Will the Conservatives now finally take real action to reduce emissions? As Canada only emits less than 2 per cent of the global greenhouse gas emissions, we will continue to play our part by reducing emissions at home and work with our partners across the globe to establish an international agreement that includes all emitters. Question period kicked off today with questions about the environment because at the G20 summit in Australia, it wrapped up yesterday with a strong statement on climate change. Now, there's been a lot of wrangling and what insiders say were difficult discussions, but the final G20 communique includes a recommendation for nations to commit funds to the UN's Green Climate Fund. The fund helps poor countries cope with the impact of climate change. How much will Canada give to that? And what about the U.S.-China pledge on climate action in Canada? Stephen Harper for years has said he'll do, he'll be in line and in lockstep with the Americans. Will he be in lockstep on this? Let's find out. In the foyer of the House of Commons is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment, Colin Carey, the NDP critic for the Western Economic Diversification, Linda Duncan, and John McKay, the Liberal Environment critic. Uh, Mr. Carey, real quick, uh, on Sunday, Prime Minister Harper said Canada's preparing to make a contribution to the UN's Green Climate Fund. Um, the U.S. committed $3 billion, Japan $1.5 billion. How much will Canada commit? Well, I think, Evan, you know already we've uh, committed $1.2 uh, billion to the Fast Track uh, Fast Start program, and it's fully uh, committed. Uh, we're seeing uh, programs and projects in 60 different uh, countries uh, for renewable energy and climate change mitigation, and uh, I'm not going to presuppose the amounts uh, with uh, the negotiations moving forward, but uh, Canada will be there. Okay, so no detail, but you're going to contribute more to the fund, is that right? Well, that's, uh, that's what the Prime Minister said. Okay. We don't know the number, although we know the U.S. and Japanese number. When will we know the Canadian number? Well, uh, as we said all along, any of these agreements, we have to have our international partners on board, and uh, I'm not going to presuppose what the actual number will be through those negotiations. The government has said for years, don't, we're, we're not going to do anything unless we're in lockstep with the U.S., specifically around oil and gas regulations that your government promised in 2006, and we still haven't seen them. Now the U.S. is committed to reducing emissions by 26% to 28% by 2025. Will Canada uh, make a binding target based on those? Well, Evan, of course, we welcome the new commitments between uh, China and the United States. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing the details. We're studying the details right now. And uh, we've always said that uh, we're committed to working with the United States, China, and all our international partners uh, to come up with an agreement that is fair and will actually work, uh, work on uh, effectively addressing climate change. Okay, but I mean, you're dancing around the answer here. Uh, I, I just wonder if you're moving the yardstick. You always said we're going to move in lockstep with the U.S. Now U.S. and China, the world's two biggest emitters, have made a pact. Is Canada pledging to follow along? Well, uh, Evan, I'll disagree with the premise of your question. Uh, when, when it's appropriate to lead, we do. And uh, I'll give you an example. With our coal-fired uh, regulations or the coal uh, sector uh, fired regulations, uh, we're going to see a decrease in greenhouse gases over the first two decades of one point. Uh, uh, no, it's uh, over uh, 1.5 uh, megatons, I believe, which is equivalent to taking 2.6 But, but sir, you, uh, sir, you and I both know that, that was the Ontario Liberal Provincial Government. I know you're taking credit for it overall, but uh, they didn't have a lot of support for that. I, I talked to the former finance minister there, and he said you act, your government actively opposed it. But, okay, fair enough. But will you be in lockstep with the, the government on this other one? Well, like I said, uh, where it's appropriate uh, to lead, we will lead. And when it's appropriate to work together with our, our international partners in the United States with different sectors, that's what we're going to do. Okay, let, let's bring in Linda Duncan and John McKay. What, what do you want to see both on the Green Fund and on uh, the climate change? Well, clearly, Evan, uh, Canada go in two directions. They clearly do not want to invest in any action in Canada. So they could step up to the plate and offer a lot more money to uh, developing nations so they can take action if Canada's not willing to. But the sad thing is, in fact, Canada has agreed to go lock spots a step with the U.S. When I was the environment critic, I acclaimed the Canada-U.S. clean energy dialogue. Unfortunately, that has not been opened up to the public, and nothing has happened under it in, in recent times. Uh, it's important to point out that United States and Mexico are saying, and mainly United States are going to do these reductions by major investments and regulatory requirements on energy efficiency and renewable power. Um, our OGO committee actually made recommendations in that direction. Our party recommended we follow suit as the U.S. has, actually having mandatory reductions, at least in federal facilities. 
So it's been proven, there's lots of analysis in my own province alone. We could reduce a lot of greenhouse gases simply by major investment in energy efficiency. So that is, that's the direction clearly the United States is taking. Where is the lockstep by Canada? Okay, uh, what about you, uh, John McKay? What do you want to see on the Green Fund issue? And then in terms of uh, where Canada ought to be on this China-U.S. deal? Well, uh, the government has uh, decided that it wants to harmonize, which is quite ironic given that uh, the United States will meet its Copenhagen targets of 2020, um, and there is not a snowball's chance that Canada will meet its 2020 targets. Now Obama has upped the ante to say that they're going to make another substantial cut to their GHG emissions pursuant to the, uh, the U.S.-China deal. And so if we had no chance of meeting the 2020 targets, I have no idea how they have any chance of meeting the 2020, uh, 2025 targets, which means it's not harmonizations, but rather it's off-key. The second significance of the Canada, or sorry, the China-U.S. agreement is that both of our major trading partners have agreed to decarbonize their economies. And I think long term that has very big significance. And you have to add in to the fact that this is actually more than just 40 percent of the GHG emissions. It's actually closer to 60 percent of the GHG emissions because the European Union is in lockstep with uh, the, uh, the U.S. So on the on the harmonization strategy, so-called, um, the, uh, the, pres uh, the Prime Minister is clearly off-key, and I think that he has no place to hide. As to the other part, I, I, I agree that we should be helping out um, uh, countries that are le uh, more disadvantaged than are we uh, to, to adjust. But there is a certain element of hypocrisy where we don't actually do anything ourselves, right. but we send money to other countries to do something from the emissions that we create in the first place. So uh, this, is, this is just resplendent with hypocrisy. Well, I think it's important that we correct the facts here, Evan. Uh, we actually are, today we are decreasing greenhouse gas emissions while oh, growing the economy. Oh, goodness. With what the opposition oh, parties would like to do, a it's an either or. Between 2005 and 2012, we decreased emissions by 5.1% while the economy continued to grow 10.6%. And these are facts, and this these is what are the opposition uh, would li not like to take into account. You're entitled to your opinion. They say either or. We, we think it's really important that we decrease greenhouse gas emissions and grow the economy at the same time, and that's exactly what we're doing. The, the problem is, as you know, the biggest emitter is growing. I mean, Mr. Kerry, the, the, with the oil sands, is the biggest emitter, and it's growing. It's not reducing, and it's on track, according uh, to every study, including the environment commissioner. She says you will not hit your own targets that your government committed to at Copenhagen. She says you're not even close to it. That's well, you, the problem. That's well, you know what? And yeah, Evan, you know what? We need a whole back. program on coal power yeah. because, in fact, what's happening in Alberta right now is. Well, the coal power is continuing. We're adding gas on. We are not replacing right. coal with gas. Okay, I, I got to leave it there, but there's lots to watch for here. Colin Carey, Leonard Duncan, and John McKay. I uh, appreciate your time as I always do. Thanks so much, you three. Thank, Thank you. you.